Well, this is going to be an amazing segment. President Obama not only owns the commander-in-chief mantle after his successful mission to kill bin Laden, but his decision to get the most wanted terrorist in the world has now proven several prominent Republicans, namely George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and John McCain, wrong in their theories about bin Laden and their charges against the president. And right now we're going to knock down those charges with glee with Salon's editor-at-large, Joan Walsh, and NBC News national investigative correspondent, the best in the business, I always say, Michael Isikoff. Here's what then-President Bush said about bin Laden just seven months after the 9-11 attacks. This is George W. Bush, President of the United States, talking about our number one enemy. Let's listen. Who knows if he's hiding in some cave or not. Uh, we hadn't heard from him in a long time. And the idea of focusing on one person... Uh, is um, really uh, indicates to me people don't understand the scope of the mission. And uh, he, he's just, he's, he's, a, he's a person who's now been marginalized. So I, I don't know where he is. Nor, you know, I just don't spend that much time on him, I'll be honest with you. I, I wouldn't necessarily say he's at the center of any command structure. And, uh, you know, again, I don't know where he is. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I repeat what I said. I truly am not that concerned about him. You know, uh, Joan, I'm not a Bush hater, but that was wise-ass behavior there. Just <laughs> wise-ass. I mean, this is the rich kid acting like, I don't care about that old girl from the dump me. I mean, that was a be behavioral weirdness right then. We well, all knew that this guy was the John Wilkes Booth of our era, the Lee Harvey Oswald, the James Earl Ray. We knew he was in that category of hated by Americans. And to say, oh, I don't really think about him anymore. What kind of talk is that? Well, it, you know, it's, real, it's very hard to listen to that. It's very hard to listen to that chuckle. But, you know, I think, that, I think we should talk about an interesting thing. And Michael can fill in blanks here, I'm sure. But one of the things that's come out, Chris, in the last week or so are the opportunities that we may have had, maybe not the slam dunks, to get bin Laden or to get closer to bin Laden that didn't happen because we were already deploying troops and equipment to Iraq. So if you listen to that with a certain kind of hindsight and you listen to that remembering that they were making the case, they decided it was bigger than bin Laden, uh, you know, they were going to blame the whole thing on Iraq and lie about it. Oh, um, yes, you've, you're always ahead of me. Well, you are this time. In other words, don't <laughs> make always. it about we were attacked 9-11. Don't make it about Afghanistan. And don't make it about al-Qaeda. Make it about your favorite topic, which is i right. got to get in and get even for the old man and go into Iraq or he whatever was, the he was. was. Starting, he was laying the groundwork to shift the, the focus from bin Laden as the, the mastermind and the bad guy to, oh. Ira to Saddam Hussein in Iraq. So listening to it like that uh, is kind of enlightening the more reporting uh. about that comes out. You know, Michael, this is, this is strategic, but, you know, we thought we had an enemy after 9-11, which was the person that he said we're going to get the people that knocked down these buildings. In his grandest iconic moment, when we all were behind him, President Bush said, we're going to get the people that knocked down these buildings. And here he is saying, we're not going to get the people that knocked down these buildings. What an asinine comment. How can you say, we're not going to do what I swore we're going to do at Ground Zero right. with my arms around the firefighter. Oh, by the way, I was, my fingers were crossed behind the guy's back. I'm not going to do this thing. Michael. Right. Look, uh, Joan, Joan is exactly right. The, the, that well, I'm not, comment I'm right that you too? just played. Well, yes, you're right, too. Of course, but you're always right, Chris. Uh, um, always. Look, that comment was March of 2002, exactly the moment when we now know that they had begun serious planning for the war in Iraq. And it's just a few months after uh, the fateful events at Tora Bora, which, which was really the last time we had a shot at bin Laden. And, uh, you know, he was in the mountains uh, there, uh, and, and U.S. Uh, intelligence operatives were pleading for military support to prevent bin Laden from escaping through the mountains of Tora Bora, to block a corridor, for ground support to block yeah. his escape. And General Tommy Franks turned those requests down. Uh, and uh, we know it, th those requests in large part came because it was a week or two after he had been ordered by Rumsfeld uh, to dust up the war plan for the invasion oh. of Iraq and his people were working full-time around right. the clock on developing I that know, war plan I for know, the I invasion know. of Iraq. One thing we, I, you know, I, 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 the last time, and one of the last times I was on, we were talking about Rumsfeld's book, uh, and, uh, you know, one of the points that really leapt out of me in Rumsfeld's book is he kind of dismissed the claims that bin Laden was at Tora Bora, and 
which was really startling because we know there is just a mountain of evidence, and right. some of that has emerged even in the last few months uh, in some of these uh, detainee reports, which we've seen from Dickie, uh, WikiLeaks, showing detainee after detainee describing bin Laden having been at Tora Bora. There was intelligence intercepts at the time showing he's, he was at Tora Bora. There really was no doubt that that was the chance to get him, and we blew it. You know, even by absolutely objective standards, not a question of policy, whether it's better to go to work or which I'm totally against, but just objectively, we should go after the guy who attacked us. They don't fail. They don't pass the test. Here's John McCain, mm -hmm. by the way, criticizing President Obama when he was a candidate on the campaign trail three years ago for saying he'd take unilateral action in Pakistan if he had actionable intelligence on bin Laden, the very scenario we just saw carried out. Let's listen. Well, we will risk the confused leadership of an inexperienced candidate who once suggested bombing our ally, Pakistan. Well, the best idea is to not broadcast what you're going to do. That's naive. You make plans and you work with the, with the other country that is your ally and friend, which Pakistan is. Well, he nailed it, didn't he, John? Yeah, he said exactly exactly the right thing to do, and that inexperienced guy really wasn't up to the task, was he, Chris? You know, uh, right, you know, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, it's just it's ridiculous to listen to, and and you know they were either mocking him for being too much of a dove or mocking him for being too much of a hawk, and it turns out that it, that as far as we know at this point, you know he he was ice cold about this. He made all the, he made all the right decisions. He made all the right precautions. He was prepared for everything, and he couldn't share what he was doing with. with with, with our alleged ally Pakistan for a lot of um, sad reasons, uh, and okay. so he pulled it off. Well, now more of the gang that couldn't think straight. In August of 2009, Dick Cheney questioned President Obama's commitment to project the country as commander-in-chief, protect the country's commander-in-chief. Let's listen to Cheney. Well, uh, I wasn't a fan of his when he when he got elected, and um, my views haven't changed any. I. Uh, I have serious doubts about his policies, serious doubts especially about uh, the extent to which he understands and is prepared to do what needs to be done to defend the nation. I guess he's waiting for more torture. Anyway, a month later, Cheney himself went after the president, accusing the president again of, quote, dithering, I love these words, and waffling. It's all about manhood when it came to crafting a military strategy in Afghanistan. Let's listen to Cheney again. It's time for President Obama to make good on his promise. The White House must stop dithering while America's armed forces are in danger. Make no mistake, signals of indecision out of Washington hurt our allies and embolden our adversaries. Waffling while our troops on the ground face an emboldened enemy endangers them and hurts our cause. You know, Joan, I think Richard Dreyfuss should play all these guys when he plays the bad guys in the movies. I mean, this is perfect. The little snarl, the big, the big bow tie from the black tie dinner, the, the supreme arrogance of we know better. We know how these things should be taken care of. These weakling Democrats, they don't quite know this commander in chief responsibility. We and, do. In, and instead of just thanking him for finishing the job they couldn't, they couldn't complete, uh, Chris, instead we have Dick Cheney this weekend uh, insisting that, well, we're really, unfortunately, probably we've abandoned some of the fantastic tactics that have gotten, that, that got us this far, rather than just giving him credit, and just, just talk about being a man, being a woman, being a, being a, a mensch, uh, and just saying, job well done, sir. They can't do it. They're incapable of it. What are you putting together, Michael, in all this thing about the differences between these two administrations? Have we ever figured out why they went off the course? We're watching now a president, and he's not perfect. I'm going to argue with about immigration later today, but they at least did what they said we're going to do. This president came into office and said, I'm going to get bin Laden. He, he put a purpose together and he put a plan together. He put a team together and then he doubled down, made sure the team was even stronger as we learned tonight, even if it went up against the Pakistanis. The other administration came in and said, we're going to get the people to knock down the buildings on 9-11 and then went wrong way car again, a totally right. different direction, followed some totally <laughs> off the wall agenda. Why? Look, we ever I mean, know for, why? Well, I mean, 
Yeah, we discussed it before. It's it's the, the one deci- affirmative decision they made that was sort of out of the mainstream, didn't have to be made, was the, the decision to invade Iraq. But that said, to be fair, um, look, a lot of the work that led to the uh, killing of bin Laden was done by, you know, uh, intelligence community professionals and military uh, uh, professionals that transcend both administrations. The, the piecing together if you follow how the trail was put together, how they developed the information on the courier, piece by piece, pebble by pebble, as okay. a former CIA director Mike Hayden came. Michael. It took uh, Okay, before you go years. soft on these guys, let me warn you something. Uh, 2005, right. when they were building this McMansion over there, <laughs> out of their equivalent of right. Chappaqua, when they were building right. this big castle for this guy, do you think if we had him under our crosshairs like this president did, we might have noticed it? In other words, if we had him really in our target zone, we're really putting the best people in it like this president has done. Do you think they could have built that McMansion in their equivalent of Chappaqua, and we would have noticed they were housing well, them there? I, I mean, look, it, it is not what what we've been told last week is we didn't really find this mansion, if if that's what you want to call it, the compound, until August of last year. So, and, and you know, the story of how we found it by following the couriers okay. is really a fascinating intelligence detective story. I'm just not so sure that it links to poli- p- particular right, political decisions. I think when you put a focus on something, you might catch it. Anyway, thank you, Isakoff, very much, okay. Michael Isakoff. You're, you're still Chris. the best. Joan Walsh, too soft tonight.